I will just briefly introduce um, like what is uh, a technology called robotic process automation or RPA and how does it affect the accounting and auditing industry and what research we can do in this area. Um, so I'll first, uh, I'll start with the, a brief introduction uh, like from the technical side and non-technical side and how uh, this technology is applied in the practice. And uh, I, I will emphasize the third part, which is uh, what research we can do. Um, so first, uh, what is RPA? So RPA is short for robotic process automation. And this is basically a technology that can automate things, right? So it's really simple. So the feature of RPA is that it has this ability to mimic human actions while uh, it interacts with uh, your computer applications. So one example is that uh, just uh, think about how you uh, like log into a system. For example, when you want to log into Canvas, you first go to the website, right, on your browser, and then you uh, input your username, password, and then you log in, and then you click uh, this course of uh, current topics in auditing. So that's how you access uh, this course module. So if you want to automate this whole process using RPA, you basically, uh, quote unquote, teach the software to click this button, go to this website and type in the password and username and uh, access the course module. So this is the feature of RPA, uh, but it goes beyond uh, just mimicking human actions. Uh, for example, uh, we can also uh, link other uh, uh, deeper level automation modules into this uh, RPA. Uh, but in general, uh, since RPA is an automation technology, it has all the uh, benefits of automation. For example, uh, it can uh, uh, like uh, increase the efficiency and effectiveness of certain tasks. It can work 24 seven without uh, having a break. Um, and uh, it basically facilitates this transformation of digitization because whenever you want to automate something, uh, you always want to make sure that you have very structured data or electronic data. Uh, so this is a brief introduction about uh, this technology. And I believe uh, most of the, the uh, AIS PhD students have already heard about this term. Uh, so it must not be uh, like, uh, to, to foreign to you, right, this concept. Um, Abby, I have one question. Yes. So I'm confused with the term with RPA and the AI. So mm. are they same? Yeah. I, I, actually, I will get to that part. This is oh, a very okay. good question. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> so I, I have one section particularly about the difference between RPA and AI. Uh, but uh, uh, to answer it now, uh, it depends. So, uh, mm, like most people think that RPA and AI are two different technologies because RPA is actually kind of dumb because it basically follows the orders that uh, humans give to this uh, give to this bot. So it can it doesn't have this ability to adapt to new environment or quote unquote think right just follow the rules. So from this perspective, RPA does not contain the AI elements. Uh, however, RPA can still be considered as AI if you think of AI as this technology that has all the functionalities uh, that can uh, uh, like uh, help you do things. So for example, in the past, people think calculators are intelligent because it can do all the computations. So if you think of AI as all these cool things that can help you achieve certain functionalities, then it is considered as AI. So the answer is yes and no. And you can see all the discussions online where the professionals classify RPA either into AI or outside of AI. So there is a vague line there. So it depends on uh, what, uh, what you think is AI, right? And then you make that uh, categorization. Uh, so it's interesting that for me, I have one paper where I, 
I say RPA is not AI, but in another paper I include it as AI. So it really depends on which uh, term, uh, what meaning you are uh, including into the term AI. So yes, I'll get to that part later. Um, so uh, then you may ask, uh, automation has been there uh, de like uh, since a long time ago. So why, uh, why RPA is so popular right now. So uh, this is because RPA has certain features that make um, the automation easier in some way. So the first feature is that uh, this technology can interact with systems from the user interface. Uh, so to put it in another way, it basically just mimic your behavior. Like if you say, click this button, and then uh, the uh, robot will just click the button that is indicated by the human user. So if you look at this diagram, uh, this may make it easier to understand. Uh, for example, we have different applications uh, on our computer, right? Like Excel, PDF, email, and other systems. So basically this RPA robot can sit on top of all these existing systems uh, as an overlay and interact uh, with them uh, from the user interface, or uh, sometimes it can still go deep to uh, uh, interact with their database. But uh, you can think of RPA as uh, an overlay uh, above all these systems. Uh, so that's why some people also call RPA as the uh, automation of automation. So that's one feature. And the second feature, uh, which is uh, similar to the first one. So because it interacts with systems from the user interface, you are not going deep inside those systems. So it's non-invasive. Uh, that means you do not need to touch the uh, deeper layers of those applications. So this is also another charming aspect of RPA. Um, and, uh, uh, and usually uh, the RPA software is made very user-friendly. So a lot of the software vendors, they advertise their products as uh, like, it's so easy to use that you don't need a very sophisticated IT background, which is true and false. And I will get to that part if I have chance. Uh, so these are the uh, good things about RPA, but it also has its drawback, and uh, I will mention that in the future research where uh, we call for research on people studying the challenges of RPA or the risks of RPA. Uh, so, so this is about the technology. Uh, and uh, so in terms of its application, um, RPA is mainly used for tasks that have the uh, following five features. So the first feature is that the task needs to be rules driven. Uh, for example, it follows the if then rules. Uh, so if I say um, uh, like don't give, uh, if uh, it rains today, you need to carry umbrella. Uh, so these are uh, rule driven. There's no human judgment involved. So if uh, your task uh, has this kind of clear cut uh, rules, then uh, uh, this is uh, a potential candidate for RPA. And of course, when you automate things, you want your task to be repetitive or voluminous uh, because it doesn't make any sense you, if you are automating a one time task, right? Ad hoc tasks. So you, uh, you want to make sure that the, ta uh, the tasks that you are automating uh, are like. Um, has huge volume and you repeat it many times. And of course, uh, you can only automate things when the tasks have uh, uh, digital data and has a lot of data, right? Otherwise, it's really hard to um, trans uh, have this digital interpretation for the computer. Uh, and these are uh, similar to what I mentioned earlier, like it has to have digital inputs and repetitive. So as long as uh, a task meets these criteria, uh, it, it can be a candidate for RPA. Uh, that said, uh, in different industries and in different uh, business units, uh, if we can find such tasks, then uh, that task could be automated. Uh, so here we have some examples of big business processes that could be automated by RPA. And actually we see many tasks that are uh, related to accounting um, 
in the accounting department. Uh, for example, payment, payment allocation, purchase order processing, order fulfillment, bank reconciliation, cash allocation reporting, invoice processing. Uh, so uh, that's why nowadays people are talking about um, the impact of this technology, uh, not just RPA, but technology in general. How can this technology impact the accountants? Because there are so many tasks that accountants and auditors do today are so repetitive, so rules-based that could be automated away. So now you see many discussions around how to equip uh, accounting uh, accountants and auditors with new skills, uh, and that's what people call accounting plus skills, which includes all these technology skills, analytical skills to uh, avoid them being automated away. So you see a lot of interesting discussions around uh, this area. Uh, so now uh, let's look at how RPA could be used in accounting and auditing. And actually, uh, it's no surprise that uh, there are some accounting tasks, including accounts payable, accounts receivable. Uh, these tasks contain um, a lot of the repetitive tasks that I mentioned earlier that could be automated. So these are uh, already or going to be heavily hit uh, by the automation technology. So this is one example of how RPA can be used in accounts payable. So uh, for those of you who are not familiar with this process, uh, uh, so I will just uh, briefly introduce. So as an accountant, uh, sometimes they, uh, like if uh, a, a customer uh, orders something but has not paid uh, their uh, invoice, then uh, the accountants need to uh, send them this in invoice, right? So basically they, uh, they receive the documents via the emails uh, and the documents are, for example, in PDF, and then they download the PDF and they extract uh, relevant information such as the customer name, customer address, uh, and then they copy and paste the data to Excel. Uh, and uh, then at the same time, they uh, want to make, make a record into their accounting system, for example, QuickBook. Uh, so they do the same thing, uh, but to the QuickBook, and then they cut a check uh, to the vendor or the client to notify them uh, uh, it's time for for you to pay or uh, to do some other relevant uh, tasks. So uh, this is basically what uh, accountants do manually, uh, uh, like to process these payables. Um, but we can use RPA to perform the same task, uh, but 10 times faster. So this is uh, one very, uh, I would say very, very simplified version of uh, uh, RPA in accounts payable. So this is just for you to have a basic idea of uh, how RPA is applied in accounting. And in terms of RPA in auditing, uh, here I basic, I borrow the picture that Professor Miklos used in his audit data analytics slides. So he said that uh, audit analytics uh, can affect each phase of an audit. Actually, that's similar to robotic process automation because in each phase of the audit, uh, they, they all have uh, the repetitive and rule-based tasks. So RPA can also affect each phase of the audit, right? Including the planning, internal control testing, substantive procedures and audit opinion. And actually uh, in CAR lab, um, the, uh, our research lab, we have case studies um, in almost each of, the uh, each of the audit phases. So I, uh, I conducted a case study in applying RPA in the audit planning uh, of one CPA firm. And um, my colleague, Andrea, uh, she has a case study on substantive procedure. Uh, and uh, another colleague of mine, uh, Freddie Huang, uh, he also did a case study on substantive procedure, uh, which is called confirmation procedure. So I will walk you through those case studies later um, to show you uh, what uh, we have done in this area.